and ninety-five. Think about that. One hundred and ninety-five. And not one country has actively called for a permanent ceasefire. Think about that. One hundred and ninety-five to one. Not even one, two, three, four, five. Not none. None. Where are the world leaders who so-called call for world peace? Shame on you! How are you sitting by and watching active genocide take place? Are you not human enough to realise that killing one child, one child is enough to intervene? But not 7,112 children later, you still have a call for a permanent ceasefire! They are so desperate to erase our Palestinian existence, to silence our screams and voices. So no matter what they do, no matter how they go against us, Palestine will always exist so long as we resist. And if anyone thinks they can take the Palestinian support out of us, Keep trying, because as we say, in our millions, in our millions, they think they can cover up their acts, all their forms of funding for this genocide, because they think they can hide anything, but they can't. We know what is happening. By removing media coverage, you haven't silenced us. You have made us stronger. You have made us seek the truth. You have made us seek justice. Truth and justice will prevail. Truth and justice will prevail. Truth and justice will prevail. We have had enough. We are tired from having to prove our basic human rights again and again and again. Every single minute that passes without a ceasefire means the death of an innocent child, man or woman. So we have one message, and it's a message that requires you all to be loud. It's a message that I want them to hear in Bradford. It's a message that I want them to hear in London. It's a message that I want Rishi Sunak and all these world leaders that have a call for a genocide, sorry, for a ceasefire against this genocide. I want them all to hear this message. And it's a pretty simple message. And it goes somewhere like this. Free, free! Free, free! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! In our thousands, in our millions! In our millions, in our billions! Free, free! Free, free! Free, free! We now have our next speaker who will be introduced. Thank you, everyone. So, yeah, I asked if I could introduce his next speaker because this is a very dear friend of mine. He's a man who went to university here. He lives on the wrong side of the Pennines, but he's travelled over here to share with us a message. Okay, he's the head or he's the leader of the Burnley Council. He's come over here to stand in solidarity with us. So I give you Afrasi Abanwa. Bismillah rahman rahim I begin in the name of God, the most merciful, the most kind. Assalamu alaikum and uh, peace and blessings to every single one of you. The first thing that I want to say is that since this conflict, war, whatever you want to call it, or what, however it will be described. What we need to say is that there are some people who will try to cause division between our communities. They will try to cause and divide every single one of us. And we're hearing since our resignations, one of the things that I've heard is that this is not a Muslim issue. It is not a Muslim issue, but there are those who will tell us that it is a Muslim issue. I look around here today at the crowd, and I tell you this is not a Muslim issue. This is a humanitarian issue, and every single one of us, 
Every single one of us needs to keep doing what we're doing, keep speaking out. And there are those who will think that, well, actually, resignations or speaking out, having protests, doing what we're doing will make no difference whatsoever. But we need to keep applying the pressure. Because we saw the other day, just yesterday, we had the Security Council vote that took place. Every single one of those members voted for a ceasefire. The US, shame on them, vetoed that. And our government abstained. In the words of Desmond Tutu, I say to you, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Just the other day at Burnley Council, we passed a motion calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. And one of our councillors who didn't vote for that, not for, from our group, but one of the councillors stood up and said that she had an issue with one of the words. She's been pedantic about a word. Well, I've got a word for her, and that is ceasefire. Ceasefire now. A number, a number of years ago, one of the things that we do as part of the work in, in, in Burnley is we've got an organisation called Building Bridges in Burnley and another organisation called Women for Peace, which is interfaith organisation, Muslims, Christians, Jews, all working together to bring peace and bring our communities together. A number of years ago, when I was last in Palestine, I was stood at the Al-Aqsa Masjid outside of the Dome of the Rock and I was speaking to the Imam of Al-Aqsa and I said, Imam Sahib, is there something, what can we do when we go from here? And he said to me three things. He said, first of all, tell people to come and visit Palestine. Tell them to come and visit Palestine. The second thing we want you to do is if they can't come, tell them about what you've seen in Palestine, what you've seen in the West Bank and what you see is happening here. And the third thing is if they can't come and they can't, you can't tell them, then pray for Palestine. Now, a few weeks ago I was sat watching the horrors unfold on the screens in front of us. I was watching ambulance convoys being bombed, refugee camps being bombed, hospitals being bombed. And I've got a young daughter and she was sat in my lap. And I thought to myself, in five years, in ten years, we're going to be commemorating this genocide, standing, having peace vigils. And my daughter's going to turn around to me and she's going to say, Daddy, you were in a position to do something. What did you do? And my answer would have been, I was too scared of Keir Starmer. My answer would have been, I was only elected to sort out your bins. My answer would have been, I was too bothered about my position. And I looked at her and I looked at what was unfolding and I thought and about what the Imam had said to me. Visit Palestine. We can't visit Palestine because of what's going on. Because of the situation we were in, we were being told that we couldn't even tell people and talk about Palestine. And because of some of the things, we were unable to pray for Palestine. And we were being asked to compromise. Well, I tell you, it, when we're in a situation where we're talking about the lives of innocent human civilians, whether they are any religion, any creed, any caste, there is no compromise. And the final thing that I want to leave you with is that every single one of us, we need to fight and we need to speak for peace. And um, one of the things that comes to me through the work that we're doing to fit, through into faith is the message from Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the peacemakers. Every single one of us needs to be fighting and talking about peace and being peacemakers. Thank you very much. Free, free. Free, free. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Oh, sorry, that was a Labour councillor. And he resigned because of the uh, 
situation in Gaza. I'm just conscious of time. Next, we've got our brother from uh, Leeds Beckett University, Brother Jawad. Ashad, he's been very active. I've seen him every single week come to these events, and uh, he's quite vocal as well. He's what's vocal. So give him a round of applause for Jawad, please. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I want to start this off by saying that there's been something that has stuck with me for the past week since I last spoke here. Um, I don't know if she's somewhere in the, uh, here in the crowd, but there's a Dr. Mario. Another one I just spoke, there's another one. And she told me after I'd spoken then to thank you for not giving up on us. But what stuck with me is that we shouldn't have to be thanked for doing the bare minimum. Because if I'm looking out here right now, I'm seeing hundreds, probably thousands of people just here, different backgrounds for humanity. I don't like being thanked for just doing what is morally right. If you have a decent sense of humanity, an ounce, a drop of just kindness in you, you'd be out here, you'd be standing because at least we're thankful to be standing in the rain. The Palestinians are having bombs dropped on them, raining down on them. They don't get to have rain. They don't get to see the sunshine when they wake up because they don't wake up. And I have to look on my phone and see how many people have died. The updated statistics of how many have become martyrs. And I'm coming here today, I'm here to mainly speak about what we want. We'll get a ceasefire. But what after that? Because we forget that before October, the Palestinians were still taking such heavy pain and losses even before. They go through military checkpoints, detained for hours, just to get from one place to another. They need permits to move between cities. They can't even go to a mosque in Ramadan without the IDF, the IOF, the Israeli Occupation Force, raiding the mosque, beating them, zip tying their hands, and taking them to prison. Do you know, do you know that Palestinians, when they're arrested, there's a 99% conviction rate? To put that into perspective, America, the United States, with the most incarcerated people in the world, only has a 95% conviction rate. Think about that. Israel, is, Israel and Palestine, they're not even that big of a country. America's massive, yet 99% conviction rate of Palestinians. And we're seeing a rise further of the death of Palestinians, not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank. There was a pregnant woman who was stabbed to death on a bus. She just wanted to go home, but now her and her unborn child are gone. They killed nine to 11 year old boys in the West Bank, sniped them dead. We've seen videos of them grabbing disabled people in wheelchairs and throwing them down. We don't just want a ceasefire. Because even if we get a ceasefire, that disgusting apartheid state will still continue their actions. And we see what they, the extent of what they can do. We see what they're capable of. We see what they can... The children, man. We, 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 know, we know that they'll just continue. They'll do it in the West Bank. They'll do it in Jerusalem. For 75 years they have done this! My friend from Palestine, he's never gone to his home, but he told me of a story of his family, his grand auntie doing a nakba. She lived in a small village on the new Tantura. And when the nakba had started, she had heard how people were coming through the villages. Raping everyone, killing everyone. And her daughters, who were regarded as the most beautiful women in the village. So she had to get mud and force them to look ugly 
So when the Israeli soldiers came, they would they wouldn't have a chance of raping them because they wouldn't be satisfied. And when they came with the broken Arabic they had, they shot at their feet and forced them to do traditional Palestinian dances, saying, "Dance, monkey, dance." Do you want to know where that grand auntie is now? She lives in Gaza. She fled from her village. Her village no longer exists. There's trees built over it now. There's a forest built over it. And then she had to go through another tragedy all over again. I. How can we just sit this and let this happen? That's why. Seventy-five years. I mean, we've not done anything. We're here to help war after. What can we do? I don't care if it's years that we come out here. We're angry, aren't we? Direct your rage. Direct that anger. Because I stand here now and I'll testify and I'll bear witness that this world, led by its cowardly leaders, will not win in any sort of way. We will not stop in any sense. I'll march for weeks if I have to. I don't care where it is. I don't care when it is. I don't care if it's late into the night. I don't care if it's freezing. I don't care if I'm burning up. I'll be here. We'll be here every week. I want a message to be given to all the Zionists that's, that's around, to the racists that walk by and try to shout at us. We're not scared of you. We'll never be scared of you. If you if, if you from if you're victimized by Palestinian liberation, then you benefit from Palestinian oppression. If you think for a second we'll let you benefit any longer, good luck. Free, 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 free. If anybody does need to pray, there are some spaces down there to pray or some spa. Uh, we do have one last speaker for them, we will do dua at the end. Um, I'm just going to pass them over to him now. It's like what the Taliban said, all these daft boys, right? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Fawzi Omar al Tabba. And I was born in Gaza and all my family live in Gaza. So, a few weeks ago, I thought I would never say this story. Although now it's about time that I said it. So, my one and only uncle, he was going to a supermarket to try find some food to bring home to his family. He jumped into his car and his car had run out of petrol, so he cancelled the whole trip. However, less than an hour later, Israel bombed the exact same supermarket he was going to killing tens of Palestinians and injuring hundreds. And my uncle was narrowly able to escape death. Now call it luck, call it divine intervention, call it a miracle, call it what you want. We are missing the point. Why do I even have to say that my uncle escaped death by not going to a supermarket? Doesn't that make us realize how disgusting Israel really is? The bombing of supermarkets, hospitals, schools and houses this is what a genocidal state does, purposefully makes our lives hell and ensures maximum destruction. Israel continuously states that they are abiding by the law and not displacing anyone. But can they explain these sorts of actions? They can't and they never will and we have to ensure that this is never forgotten. Until now, we have limited contact with our families, often going up to five days with no signal between us and them. And this is not just my family. There are millions of Palestinians around the world who have family in Gaza. And our hearts honestly are pierced and cut every single time we are unable to check on them. But that does not mean that they cannot see us. They can see us and they can feel us. They feel us all those thousands of miles away. My cousin Khalid al tabba he was able to get some internet during the pause in the war two weeks ago. And he was able to view all of our protests in Leeds and London and around the world. 
He texted me saying of how proud he was, not just of me, but of all of you. Those of you that have no family in Gaza and no family in Palestine, yet you are still here in support with us. Trust me, they can hear you and this fills them with patience. They know that the hell they are living through is not being ignored. They know we are doing all that we can to help them. So don't feel like these protests are not doing anything. Because even if they do nothing in the moment, together they have big impact. And you can at least rest assured knowing that you are a human who feels. And lastly, I have been told by multiple people that tell me to maybe calm down on these protests, especially being from Gaza telling me to at least cover my face so that the Zionists cannot see me or harm me. But wallahi, 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 I will never cover my face or be forced into silence because what is the worst that they can do? Because what is the worst that they can do? The worst that they can do is kill me. Well, I'll tell you from now, Palestinians don't fear death. And even if you do end up killing me, you know what will happen? Billions of us will take my place and billions will carry the message. Because at the end of the day, Gaza is my city and Palestine is my country. And even if the whole world is against us, just like it is, we shall return. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Free, free. Free, free. Hina, thousands, hina, millions. We have just a quick announcement for West Yorkshire United for Palestine, the group that organised this protest. Um, yeah. Hi, um, I'm from Wakefield. There's a group of us, Wakefield United for uh, Palestine. And we have been doing a few things in Wakefield. I just want to let you know, we have been lobbying against our MP who abstained in the vote for a ceasefire. Simon, Simon Lightwood, we need to hold our elected members accountable. We've also been outside organisations that we should be uh, boycotting. We've been attending marches like this. And finally, the reason I'm here, we have organised a fundraiser for Palestine in Wakefield at Lightwaves Leisure Centre, which is opposite the bus station between 12 and 4 p.m. next Sunday. Please come and support us, because I'm sure that I speak on behalf of all of us here when I say that we want to be on the right side of history and we will be here at marches and protests time and time again until the occupation ends and inshallah one day we have a free palestine please again support wakefield united for palestine next sunday 12 to 4 pm at lightwaves leisure center thank you Free free. free, 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 from the river to the sea, from the river to the sea, one more time louder, from the river to the sea, thank you, now, can we also um, get the banners back, they're back here if anyone's got a banner, thank you, I'm just going to, um, finish up with a, a prayer. I appreciate not everybody here is a person of faith. So if you're not a person of faith, feel free to join in and maybe just have a minute of silence. But I want to say a prayer for the people in Gaza or be in English. Just say Amin if you can. Thank you very much. Bismillah alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. I pray that Allah gives peace to the people of Gaza. I pray that Allah give justice to the people of Gaza. I pray that Allah give security to the people of Gaza. I pray that Allah give shelter to the people of Gaza. I pray that Allah gives opportunity to the people of Gaza. I pray that every single person that has died as a result of this bombardment and of the last hundred years from injustice Allah gives them Jannah to the Dawson and Allah. Louder guys, Ameen. May Allah peace and blessings be upon all the people that have been suffering as a result of the Israeli regime. May all the innocent children who have no idea, who are not any, 
who do not know any better about what's going on, may they be given paradise. Amen. Thank you very much. Everyone who has come out here today, truly, truly, thousands and thousands of you have come out here. Look at the weather, it's raining. And you lot have persevered and come out today. So I just want everyone to give everyone a massive, massive round of applause. And there is no right way to end the protest. Well, this is the way that I think we should end the protest. So now everyone that's voices are hurting, they're gonna hurt a bit more. So get your loud voices ready. Everybody, when you go home, please be safe. Please don't go by yourselves. You just be very mindful of uh, what you're wearing as well. We ask you all to be safe, so we can come back here next week without any problems. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a quick announcement as well. So if anyone in here is a Beckett student, we've just started the Leeds Power Science Society a month ago. If you're a Beckett student, Join it please, our Instagram is LBU Palestine Society, the WhatsApp link should be on there as well, thank you. Thank you everybody that's come here today.